be uh, teaching and learning better, right? That it's not just about like building the capacity of the teachers and the education staff. Uh, it, it's not just about providing infrastructure, hardware and resources. But the thing is, it, it's actually uh, quite a holistic approach that I think both the universities have taken, right? With respect to ensuring that you have the policies in place, you have the mechanisms in place, you have the processes in place uh, for quality assurance that you are building up partnerships, right? Uh, with the key stakeholders uh, of the online and blended teaching and learning, uh, not just the students and the teachers, but also with the industry partners and also the accreditation board. So uh, I think those are really crucial things that we need to take note of, of uh, how we see IIOE not just as a professional development or a set of professional development programs, right? But IIOE is very much of an ecosystem, right? And it provides a platform whereby our partners can come in to share your expertise and your experiences. Okay, thank you so much uh, to the two universities uh, for sharing your experiences. Uh, let's move on to segment two, where I would invite Professor Samet Ibrahim uh, from Insham University, uh, who would be chairing a round table um, where we would be looking at different IIOE partner HEIs uh, that would be discussing their practices in using ICT to empower education, assure education continuity and also to promote digital transformation during pandemic so let us welcome the next chair professor summit please uh, thank you professor lim and uh, good morning and good afternoon for everybody i would like to thank uh, unesco for uh, this opportunity and for the ioe initiative um, which came right on time when everybody in the world uh, needed it so uh, as Professor Lin said, uh, this time that we share uh, our knowledge and our experience, and it, it will be great to hear from all our partner universities across the world in Africa and in Asia. And uh, just to keep up with the, the agenda and without further ado, uh, I would like to hear first from the first uh, speaker, Professor uh, Imebet uh, Mologita, the Academic Vice President of Addis Ababa University, Ethiopia. Oops. Professor Imebet. Yes, I'm here. I'm trying to share my screen. Okay. Oops. So I'm having difficulty with the video and sharing screen. Let me see. Shall I just Shall I uh, proceed without sharing my screen because time is running? Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I really thank uh, IIOE for uh, organizing this uh, uh, webinar so that we can share experiences and learn from our colleagues. Uh, my presentation will be on, uh, uh, I'll give you a background of Addis Ababa University, then I'll talk about our COVID response, and then uh, how we benefited from IIOE. Addis Ababa University uh, was established in 1950, so it has been uh, 70 years. It's the oldest and biggest university. It has uh, 10 colleges, uh, two technology institutes, and it has 10 institutes and three of these institutes combined teaching and 
मेरे स्कूल के गाने भी चल रहे हैं सब कुछ चल रहा है ये ना मेरे बच्चे के साइड से गिरा रहे हैं uh we have 76 undergraduate programs and 346 graduate programs we have about a total of 46847 students uh during the covid uh, what we did uh, for graduate students and undergraduate students was different for graduate students we kept them for some time on campus trying to continue education using uh, handouts and yeah. other type of supports but this didn't work out and also there was a risk of uh, covid spread therefore they all went back to their uh, home but for graduate programs we switched immediately to online or virtual teaching so it was really a challenge it was sudden uh there was confusion but uh staff tried every means to continue the education uh, some used uh, telegram email zoom moodle and uh with the discussion uh of the university community uh, the top management we adopted google meet as our tool to continue education Uh, along that line uh, the our ict office gave uh, about five training to all academic uh, not all but participants from academic staff uh, five sessions so it was uh, a response to the sudden covid breakout but now we're uh, organizing our services Uh, to give a more structured and continuous training so we're focusing on uh, capacity building of staff as well as expanding and strengthening the infrastructure uh, now we have uh, a structure uh, the structure is uh, uh, monitored or reports to the academic vice president and then we have a committee virtual training support committee and then we have uh, the different colleges the each college has a committee therefore we have this structure what uh, that we use to facilitate the training uh, and the whole process is uh, monitored and uh, coordinated by uh, the teaching learning support office uh, going online was very challenging because of the similar problems that we share with other uh, colleagues uh, infrastructure was very uh, poor not sufficient to conduct really powerful online teaching uh, we have uh, problems with uh, students not having devices um, and also the internet connection throughout the city was not very good but despite these challenges we persevered and we were able to hold uh, an online graduations where we uh, graduated uh, about 5000 of our students uh, currently as i said earlier we have a committee and we are giving offering training to uh, staff through their colleges so so far we have uh, given training to five colleges and about 40 staff members have been trained on that and because of this structure we're continuing uh, supporting and uh, expanding internet connection and infrastructure and okay. definitely adopting blended okay. approach to our teaching learning activities uh, there is a decision by top management as well as a consensus among staff that covid uh covid was kind of an opportunity because there was so much resistance from our university community in adopting online approaches even uh, assessing staff using online means online survey was a challenge but now there was no option and there is no option so we are going online and adopting blended learning particularly for our graduate programs in this regard IIOE was very very supportive because it was timely it was very important a number of uh, participants uh, staff have participated especially on this big big data training 
uh, and myself have uh, participated in a training and our staff uh, who are involved in this project have been trained using IOE, I, IOE workshops. So it was very, very, very important. Uh, we've now currently completed our smart uh, classroom and we are awaiting the shipment of equipment. Professor, I, I uh, to remind you of the time we have, like, maybe if you okay. can to your uh, presentation, please. Pause with okay, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. So we're, we're going to use the smart classroom to expand and uh, strengthen our online working and we also count on the support of IIOE and we believe that it has been very helpful and it's important and it's timely. Thank you IIOE for all the support. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to invite Professor Mohamed Bashir Moazo representing Ahmed Ubello University from Nigeria. Professor Moazo, are you are you here? Professor Samir, good morning, and good and good morning to you all from all over the world. I'm Mohammed Bashir Moazo, representing Amadou Bello University Zaria, and doing a presentation on our experiences with the IOE for the past. Uh, one year. Amelie Bello University Zaria is the largest and most cosmopolitan university in Nigeria and was founded in 1962. We currently have over 80,000 students spread over 100 undergraduate programs and over 600 postgraduate uh, programs. Um, the, over the period of the COVID-19, which actually took everybody by surprise over here. The university has embarked upon the development of policies and guidelines to support blended learning and also upgrade of infrastructure to support the blended learning. However, this, these attempts at, at addressing the COVID-19 uh, issue has been seriously hindered over here by the industrial action embarked upon by academic staff. The, all public universities in Nigeria have been closed for the past uh, 10 months. However, some of the other challenges that we've, we've encountered over this period in trying to do this transition has been that, the require, that need to be able to change people's attitude to accept, to accept the reality that the on, online is now the new normal. In that process, we've also discovered noticeable skill, skills gaps within the academic and student population in the use of tools such as Zoom and others for online lecture sessions and deliveries. Another critical issue is also the issue of internet, subscription to the internet and quality of such connections, especially for the students as they've been out of school. So. The, so some of the deliberate measures the university has embarked upon to be able to respond to the challenges of the COVID-19 has been the upgrade of equipment at the data center, so which includes uh, upgrade of the bandwidth subscription for the, for the university community, and then the active participation of the interested staff in all the IIOE uh, uh, COVID-19 response lectures and training workshops, especially and very importantly, the big data uh, training uh, workshop. So, <clears throat> so with respect to the implementation of the IOE, the university is really interested when things return to absolute normalcy with respect to return to academic uh, activities in the university for the, for the university to become the IOE focal point in Nigeria. And I think we've tried to display such uh, abilities in how we've been able to get some other university staff to, uh, uh, to undertake the IOE big data training. And we hope once the smart classroom project is completed, that that will become the 
admin and technical hub of the IOE in the university and in Nigeria as a whole. The university is also sent in encouraging staff and students to enroll in IAE courses to further enhance their learning uh, experiences. And we're also starting the development of peculiar online courses and workshops that are relevant to our uh, needs. Some of the gains that the university has acquired from in the partnership with the IOE includes the acquisition of the smart classroom, the acquisition of strategies for effective online sessions and delivery from arising from all those COVID-19 uh, lectures, and also the, the knowledge of tools and techniques to further enhance those online sessions and deliveries. We also have certain suggestions for, for the IOE based on our experience experiences using the IOE platform. And so some of those include the fact that some of the courses that have been advertised on the IOE are still, are still not uh, available. We also will want a situation where the user experience on the IOE platform will be further enhanced by making it a bit more interactive. And also the IOE admin platform should be made more uh, flexible. Then for as far as the university is concerned, some of the things going forward post pandemic will be the the uh, arising from the development of those guidelines will be the implementation of the operational and quality assurance guidelines for blended learning we actually have a distance learning center which has been on for the past five years doing distance learning but it is very critical that we implement those policies with respect to blended learning for on-site uh, students and then the strategic training and retraining of staff on the use of tools and techniques to enhance the online uh, experiences. And then uh, just like I said, the strengthening of the distance uh, learning uh, program. So on behalf of the Amadibel University, I wish to thank IOE and we're very grateful and very happy with the partnership with the IOE for the past one, we look forward to more uh, collaborative partnership with the area. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Mwazo? Yes. I'd like to know that the representative of uh, Makariri University is, is not online. So I'll move to the next professor, uh, Batar Oshir Bart, president of the Mongolian University of Science and Technology from Mongolia. Professor Oshir Bart, please. Okay, thank you, thank you. Now I'm just sharing my short presentation. Okay, thank you. Can you can you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on your time and location. In general, good day to all these participants. Warm greetings from Mongolia. My name is Achir Batbatar. I'm representing Mongolian University of Science and Technology. I am very pleased to participate to this IOE annual general meeting. It's a great honor for us to meet all of you again. And now I would like to briefly introduce about our university activity during the last while and uh, our online education activities during this COVID-19 pandemic situation. Mongolian University of Science and Technology uh, founded in 1959, our university, one of the as leading state public university in the country, especially in science and technology and engineering education. So today we have uh, more than 11 uh, affiliated uh, university uh, schools in the, inside of the university, two branch schools in our uh, 
local uh, cities. We have more than 20,000 students meantime, and uh, more than 1,240 faculty members meantime. Open education development activities uh, started in our university since uh, 2002. From the time we firstly uh, implemented our university information management system. And uh, during the past two years, we, yes, of course, we really need to activate uh, this open education development activities. Uh, perhaps, um, yes, uh, 